Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Campbell, joined by Jade Warshaw this hour. The number to call is 888-825-5225. Don't be scared. You jump in, we'll talk about your life and your money. That's all we want to do is help you take the right next step and maybe talk you off a ledge if you're about to do something stupid. That's always a fun call. (laughs) <laughs> the preventative medicine versus the emergency surgery. All right, let's kick it off with Maria in Denver, Colorado. What's going on, Maria? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Um, so I purchased a home from a methodic, and I'm now $33,000 in debt because I had to do remediations on the home um, after I closed. And I'm just curious how I should best pay this off and salvage my credit. I did receive a settlement from the owner um, after discovering this problem, but um, I still have probably 80K in repairs to make to the home. And so I'm just curious how I can pay it down and salvage my credit. So how much total debt do you have outside of a mortgage? Um, The 33,000, I don't have any other debt outside of my mortgage. How many cards is that across? Across three cards. How much, uh, how much money are you bringing in every month? I'm bringing in about, um, 4,000, uh, no, probably 5,500. 5,500. And then what portion of that is your mortgage payment? 2,800. Yipes. All right. We got troubles. We got troubles. So tell me a little bit more about this. Did you call it a remediation? Yeah, so um, they had to rip out the kitchen, all the doors, all the lighting, anything porous, anything wood. Mm -hmm. So I basically bought the home and then they stripped it. Um, I found out two days after closing that. Did none of this come up in the inspection? That's my question. No, yeah, none of it came up in the inspection. So Um, how did it come up? I received a police report that I had requested. Um, two days after closing, I had received every other police report and they had some police activity at this property because I did my due diligence and I looked through it, Uh Um, but I didn't receive the one report that had the previous owner handing over the mess to the police at her home saying she had a a problem um, until two days after closing. I don't know what happened to that one report that held it up, but every other report was about a dog or about... um, So she was cooking meth in the house. No, no, not cooking, just doing this. Even at that level, you still have to remediate. Oh, my goodness. And you said there's still $80,000 yeah. of repairs. Is this related to that? Or this is just other yeah. repairs that you were planning on doing? Related. They stripped Whoa. the home um, after I purchased it. And so I couldn't really go back and take, I, I couldn't like undo the loan. <laughs> Essentially, I sued her. And I got, um, thankfully, I got about sixty grand back, but still, there's so what happened, what happened to that? Amount of debt. Yeah, what happened to that sixty k? So, I have that, and that's my my question is, how do I pay down? Like, do I pay it on one lump sum? Because I'm just worried that if I pay off my debt in one lump sum, it's gonna crash my credit more. I no. would not um, be concerned with your credit. Me right neither. Now. You got bigger problems and bigger fish to fry. I would knock out all the credit card debt today. The rest becomes your emergency fund, and then we cash flow the rest of the repairs. Okay. And so just make the rest of the pairs as on cash as you're able to in on cash. Yeah. Okay. But leave three to so six months of expenses in there for actual emergencies, which is not known repairs. Okay. Cause we want to avoid you going further into that. I don't know yeah. why you're concerned about the credit at this point. You're, you're not going to go take out more debt. Are you? No, but it just, I and mean, you've got, listen, you've got a, credit. you've got a home. You're going to make a mortgage payment every single month. You're going to be, you're going to be just fine. The credit score will settle <laughs> itself. Yeah. And you're not planning okay. on taking out more credit. So no. Okay. You're right. You're right. That's yeah. the only point of having a good credit score is so you can access more debt. Yeah. Well, I do want to, I was planning to start like buying other homes and, you know, no, 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 no. We're, we're done buying but, homes right now. We need to focus yeah. on our problems today, and we can become real estate moguls down the line when you have a paid-for property and money in the bank to, to pay cash. Well, here's the thing, Maria. We're not in, in – hear us when we say we're not – the point of – we're not intentionally trying to tank your credit. However, 
George and I both know that when when you set down the path of paying off debt, you're also simultaneously saying, not, o- not only am I paying off this debt, but I'm not gonna borrow money in the future. Otherwise, what's the point of paying off debt just so you can get more and pay it off again? That doesn't really make sense. So there's kind of this assumption that if you're paying off your debt, if you're working this hard to do that, if you're taking this lump sum and you're being diligent in that way, you kind of have to think about the future and go, okay, well, if I've done all this work, then in the future, I'm going to pay cash the same way you're going to pay cash for these other remediations that have to take place in the same way, you know, in the future, if you do choose to buy real estate, you'll save up and pay cash for it. Even though that sounds like a mountain load of cash, it's just good to kind of draw that line in the sand. Okay. Well, great. Then that makes my solution easy. Just pay it down and yeah. work with their remaining cash. Well, I'm, I'm equally we'll as worried, on. Maria, about this mortgage. It is 51% of your take-home oh, pay. Oh, yeah. Well, I have two roommates. Okay. So I'm not okay. paying it all myself, no. But... Are th- Go ahead, George. Well, I'm just, there's there's a lot going on here now with the roommate situation. Yeah, are they chipping in? Yeah, I want to know. Can we have some clarity? So you own the house. Are they chipping in at all for any other repairs? Tell us you're the more. landlord, so it's on you. Oh, I guess Legally. that's true. But are you increasing the rent to help cover some of this, or what's the deal there? No, rent is staying the same with them. Um, they are helping with the repairs, like by you know helping come in and actually do the repairs. So right. their time, they're paying you with their time, right? Um, and that's fine. So that's been helpful. Um, and then also, my mortgage lender offered two years free refinancing. So hopefully, if all goes well. You know, not predicting the future, but if all goes well, I'll be able to refinance. So if the rates drop, they're saying we were not going to charge you to refinance. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The only thing that makes me worried about this situation is when people own homes, but they can't afford the rent on their own. So they have roommates. I always like a situation where you can you can float the rent on your own and you can do the mortgage on your own. You don't need the roommates for it to, you know in order for it to not be dangerous for you. And I don't like the fact that this would be dangerous for you if something happened with the roommates. That's that's my only red flag on this. Well, I can definitely float the rent myself. The So what I told you, the mortgage, I guess I should clarify, that also includes utilities, insurance, all of the things bundled. I have no car debt. I have no other debt. Okay. Um, my monthly expenses include cell phone, my cell phone, and that's more or less that outside of food. So okay. I, I can definitely float the rent on my own. Well, I'd focus on just knocking out this credit card debt today. Cut up the cards. Don't look back. Use the rest of the emergency fund and cash flow the rest of these repairs. Do not go into debt ever mm-hmm. again. And I'm sorry you're going through this. That's crazy. Goodness gracious. These that's inspectors. Crazy. Should I just go become an inspector? Be like, looks good, guys. I don't understand how that that's was crazy. missed. Wow. Whew. All right. This is The Ramsey Show. Your home is probably the biggest purchase you'll ever make. And with the real estate market like it is now, you'll need a mortgage company you can trust. That's Churchill Mortgage. You guys, buying a home is not a button push. It's a process. It takes building a relationship with an expert who will dig into the details and give you peace of mind without busting your budget. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country and they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Go to churchillmortgage.com to get started. back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Jade Warshaw. The number to call is 888-825-5225. Well, it's time for our long-running segment, Jade. And by long-running, you mean this is the third time? Third time. Okay. (laughs) It's long for me, you know. So it's called Pick a Side, and this is where we have two people on the line, and we have to help them kind of settle a debate. And you and I, at the end of it, 
have to pick a side after we hear them out and oh, hear I, their case. I enjoy this thoroughly. I pitched Judge George for the name of this segment. They didn't like that. Judge George? And I, and I wanted a little gavel. Oh. Just well, a little baby gavel. Then I'm going to pitch Judge Jade. Oh, dang. That's so much cooler. <laughs> All right. I give up. Here we go. Let's see what Jennifer and Joe have to say in Denver, Colorado. What's going on, guys? Hi. Yeah, I'm ready to buy a new car, and my husband thinks I'm fine with the one that I have. Ooh. Wow. All right, Joe, what do you have to say for yourself? Well, I do agree that she needs a new car. Um, she just wants to spend way too much on a new car. What's what does way she too much? Spend? <laughs> 50000 Okay. That's a lot of money. And that's the most you guys have ever spent on anything outside of a house, I'm guessing? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Where are you guys at financially? We're on baby oh. step seven. Yes. Paid for house, no debt, love it. And what's your net worth? It would be what our house is worth. Yeah, 600000 um, plus, plus 50, retirement? 700 So not quite a million? No. Okay. Nope. All right, and what's the household income? One fifty, approximately. Last year we did one fifty. Okay, one fifty. And how much cash do you guys have in the bank? We have our emergency fund right now of ten thousand. And I got ten thousand in my business account. So ten thousand and ten thousand. If you were to buy this car, a is it? Were you thinking of getting something brand spanking new? And two, how are you going to pay for it? What's I would plan? want to save up for it. Okay. And I don't necessarily want something new. Um, it's just what I want just came out. So I want to wait a couple of years um, until I can buy one a couple of years old. What kind of car is it? Can Can you tell us? It's the Toyota Grand Highlander. Highlander. Ooh, where's John Deloney when we need him? That's know, what right? he ended up getting. I need like a picture of a Highlander. I, I don't really know what that is. I'm going to Google it. They're beautiful. Really great cars. Okay, so what is the car you're currently driving? I have a 2007 Acura MDX, and right. it's getting close to 200,000 miles on it. Oh, she's just getting started. That's a nice that's a nice. The MDX little ride, is invincible. Okay, love that. And what is he driving? I'm curious. I have a 2004 GMC pickup truck, and then we also have a 2020 transit connect van i'm self-employed and so i use that van for work cool okay, okay. might be time for both of you to upgrade I baby know, step right? seven living like no one else <laughs> i know that's so i'm right. guessing you guys have a sizable margin in your budget now to save up how much could you throw every single month just to kind of a side savings account oh i think we could have it saved in six months wow mm. yes yeah that's pretty impressive it's pretty simple so yeah i mean we could save five six thousand a month that's no great. More expenses. Okay. So, um, tell us, Joe, why? Tell us what you would do if it were your choice. Obviously, we know Jennifer wants this fifty thousand dollar Toyota Highlander, slightly used. In your book, what's something a little bit more reasonable? Thirty, thirty-five thousand. Maybe not the Grand Highlander, but the regular Highlander. That's what I'm looking at. This one I'm looking at is like thirty thousand twenty twenty-three Highlander LE. Is that not the one? That's no, I want the, the grand Highlander. You want the big they boy. Just, they just came out in 2024. Okay. <laughs> got you. Joe, got I'm curious. Okay. Where did where'd you get that 35 number from? Just your heart? Oh, yeah, just my heart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I look on Craigslist, and you can find the regular Highlanders. Yeah, I see one. 30, 30,000 miles for 30,000 or so. Yeah, I see what's going on here. Okay, interesting. Um, Ooh, all right, we have a lot of information I, here. I feel like, you know, we've been doing Dave Ramsey's baby steps for a long time. I feel like I've been living like nobody else. Mm -hmm. When do I, we're on baby step seven. When do I get to live like nobody else? Listen, I feel that. So tell me, when was the last time you did an activity that you would call a live like no one else, the latter that, that you've like done? Like at least a couple of grand yeah. where you're like, we dropped some money on this. We oh, went to vacation? the Dominican. Yeah. Okay. okay. When was that? Last month. Nice. Okay. 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 So you guys are enjoying life. Yes. So we would say you, you've driven like no one else. Now it's time to drive like no one else. You've driven the, yes. the hoopty Dave car. Now it's time to drive the Dave car. You know what I'm All saying? Right. I've yeah. made up my mind. I, I know what I'm, I know yeah. how I'm going to vote. It, 
it, I got, it got in a car accident a couple months ago, so it's dinged up on the side. Oh, man, <laughs> listen, keep, you keep playing. Tell us more. <laughs> She's, She's like, really playing it all up. These, all these stupid little things don't work on it anymore. Like, you cannot reset my clock. So you can't tell what time it is in there. Jennifer, I um, call those my, special features. My, my seatbelt doesn't go back. Listen, I got my phone in the car. Up. I got my Apple Watch in the car. I know what time it is. It's fine. That's not a big deal. But I'm with you. Here's okay. Can I vote? I know what my vote is. Are we casting votes? I think we're casting votes. Okay. You guys ready to hear the the verdict? Let's, yeah. hear it, Let, let's say it on three. All right. Are the name of the person that we think is right? Uh yeah. Say the name okay. of the person you think is right on three. One, One two, two, three. three. Jennifer. Jennifer. Yeah. Oh my. Jennifer, you just won a brand new t- no, I'm just kidding. Be <laughs> Toyota awesome. Highlander. That'd be fantastic. And a wow. dinette set from Broy Hill. I could what be on Prices What do you think? Are right. you shocked? No. I, I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> of course Joe is shocked. Uh, here's the thing, because I know this. We bought my wife a, a new to us car. It mm-hmm. was a slightly used luxury car, and it hurt my soul, Joe, to write that check. Yeah. But I also knew this is part of living the plan. It's part of the plan. And yeah. I have a hard time letting go and writing a big check like that. But when you pay for it in cash, you go, oh my gosh, that was a lot. And then you go, this is paid for. This mm. is amazing. This is a huge blessing. And it's why we lived like this yeah. for so many years. And so I think you guys are doing the right thing. Just so you know, the parameters here, you don't want all things with motors and wheels to be more than half of your annual income. So that's where I'm going. All right, 150K is your income. Mm-hmm. Everything you own. Should be 75K. Listen, Joe, you could turn around and get yourself a $50,000 car and be all right. Now, what is this Transit <laughs> Connect worth? Um, About 20000 I okay. guess. Yeah. So even the 20 plus the 50 for hers, that would be 70. You still got some wiggle room there. Okay. Uh, not too much. Not but, too much. And, you know, maybe you wait three years and you get the Highlander, but I think you, you go for it in two years from now and you get a two-year-old Grand Highlander. And uh, if you can't wait that long, then just go for a normal Highlander, and you can always upgrade later. Mm-hmm. Nothing says you have to drive this car for the next 20 years, which is kind of how you guys have been living. Right. I yeah. feel like Joe's so. really disappointed on this. He was waiting. <laughs> to, no, you shouldn't spend more than 30. <laughs> but I think that will help you guys to go, okay, half of our income shouldn't be tied up in these things. Yeah. That means we do need to scale back because this transit plus the car Joe's going to get plus the mm-hmm. car Jennifer's going to get, it's going to add up to be a large part of our world. And then once you hit millionaire status, you can go buy that brand new car. And here's why. It's not a you know fundamentalist thing. It's just that too much of your world would be tied up in a depreciating asset. But when you have a million dollar net worth, you can stomach that hit on depreciation a little right. easier. And so you guys oh. will be there in no time. How old are you two? I'm 45. Uh, and I'm 56. Oh, my All goodness. Right. Yeah. You got so much time to live and drive like no one else. And you know what, Joe? I think it should be time for you to upgrade after. What is your dream car, Joe? It's a $30,000 car. We know that. It's uh, the one he's you know got. <laughs> I actually love my truck. <laughs> he wants another GMC pickup. <laughs> no, he wants, like he wants he to keep has. the one he has. I he like oh, the one I got. That's I'm amazing. It. It's got an eight-foot bed. It's got the diesel, and I'm good. Thank you, you know Joe. What? They don't make that. those eight-foot beds anymore. All these new pavement they princesses don't. out here got the tiniest <laughs> little beds. I'm like, what are we even buying pickup trucks for anymore? So then, Joe, real quick, tell us, if you could spend $30,000 on anything, not a vehicle, what is your thing? Like, what's your live like no one else thing? Oh, I would do a boat. Hey, okay. <laughs> there we go. Now we got it. <laughs> Joe's in the boat. Thank you guys so much for the call and for letting us have some fun. Excited for you guys to make that cash purchase of that beautiful new-to-you car very, very soon. More of your calls coming up. 888 825 This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. 
So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Jade Warshaw this hour. The number to call is 888-825-5225. Springfield, Illinois is where we're heading next. Levi joins us there. Welcome to The Ramsey Show, Levi. Are you with us, Levi? We were so close to getting Levi on the air. Well, we'll try to get you back, Levi. I don't know what happened, but if we can't... um, I'm sorry, and call back later, my friend. We're going to go to Taylor up next in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Taylor, welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Um, Okay. So my husband and I put in an offer on a house, which was accepted right away. We had seven days to turn in the earnest money. Mm -hmm. And on day five, we decided to not um, do it. So we told our realtor right away, and we never paid the earnest money. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, long story short, we got married last August. We're now pregnant with a baby in July. And we found out last month that my husband who's in the military is deploying this fall for about a year. So the reason that we jumped on this house is because we got scared, tried to make a decision that would be easier for me to live by myself for a year. Um, and then after signing it, we were like, this is not a good idea. This is not the house we want. So we canceled. We never paid the earnest money, and now the seller's mad, and they want not only the three thousand of the earnest money, but they're asking for five thousand, and they're threatening to seek legal counsel, I guess, if we don't pay, and we just don't know what to do. So you signed the offer, saying yeah, that you would, the and and the offer said that you would pay within the seven days money within seven days. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What does the contract say about? getting out of this because generally there's you know a few ways you could legally back out of this and get your earnest money back or not have to pay home inspection contingency uh-huh. appraisal contingency financing contingency is any of that in the contract it is but none of that applies to this situation and it, i mean it was just us backing out of it our realtor isn't being very helpful which we feel like is because obviously she's not I think you are on the hook for it, though, Taylor. If you make an offer, because literally my husband and I were just in this situation a couple of weeks back. If you make an offer and then they and, and you work with the agent, say, here's what we're offering, da-da-da-da-da, they send you the paperwork, you sign it, you're saying, mm-hmm. when you sign it, you're saying, I'm going to pay the earnest money within this many days, this is what's going to happen next, and this is what's going to happen next. You're kind of you signing on the dotted line is committing to the offer in many ways, in all the ways. <laughs> so there's part of me that no. thinks that you're on the hook for this and you just, the fact that you didn't pay the earnest money doesn't mean that it wasn't due. It just meant that you didn't say what you said you were going to do. If the contract said that you would provide the money within seven to 10 or five to 10 business days or whatever it was, five to seven okay. days. So they, what would you do about the five thousand dollars though? Because it was originally three, and now they want more money. Yeah, where? Why are they That's wanting different. more? Yeah, because the they reasoning? are mad about last time, and they refused to sign the contract, the new one where we said we're we're canceling and not paying, and they so they're losing time because they won't sign anything. Mm. Um. That's up in the so air. I feel like that's debatable. I mean, they could probably fight it in court and fight for that lost time and put a dollar value on that. I would see if you can just settle with them for the three and go, Mm -hmm. listen, here's all we can do. I got a baby on the way. My husband's about to be deployed. We're in a crazy situation. I hate that this happened. Didn't want it to go down like this. Here's your three. Okay. I don't know if there's a legal way you can get out of this without you fighting it. And I don't think you guys have the money or time to go to court and Mm -hmm. fight this. No. (laughs) 
That's the thing. Okay. Listen, I, I hate that this happened, Taylor, but I tell people all the time, like that earnest money, if you buy the house, it goes towards the down payment. But if you don't, that's money upfront that you're spending that obviously you have the propensity to lose and that I call it skin in the game money. Yeah. This is shows I'm, a, I'm right. really serious about, you know, buying this house. And so yeah. the other thing you could do, which has its own risks of going through with the home inspection and the appraisal and financing and then having one of those things cause an issue to where you back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like these people are angry enough that they're not going to be happy if you back out later on and waste even more of their time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's tough. So that's those that's a road you could go down, but I'm telling you, you could still end up paying and it still could be messy. If it were me, I'd take the contract and I would ask around and I'd ask a couple of different real estate agents. I'd say like, am I on the hook for this? Am I on the hook for this? And see if you can get some free counsel from other agents. If you say that yours is not helping out much, which never use them again, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But, and maybe contact a real estate attorney and say, and just do a free consult yeah. and say, here's my situation. Do you think I have any, a, a case here to even fight this or mm -hmm. what should I do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just concerned. We don't want this to go on any longer because obviously they're mad about last time and we tried to cancel as soon as possible, but it went on way longer because they're fighting it. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're a little confused why they wouldn't just want to put their house back on the market, but they can't do that until this is like done. So they're losing time on their own. So but. this is it's causing them to hang in the balance here until they get the situation sorted with you guys. Mm. Yeah. 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 I mean, you've guys, you have the three thousand. How yeah. much do you guys have in cash? About fifteen. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna label this under kind of a stupid tax, and we learn from yeah. the mistake, and we move <laughs> on and go. That hurt. Let's not make decisions out of desperation again, because this is the kind of stuff that will happen. Okay. So are you guys going to rent for the foreseeable future while your husband's deployed? We own a house and we talked about renting or buying and I hated all the rentals and it just didn't feel like home. And so we looked at a house that was closer because we live pretty far out. And I mean, the interest rate is double what ours is at. And we just felt like it would be a big waste of money for us. So, And why can't you, you know, stay where you're at right now? I can. It's just, it's, we're about 25 minutes out from town so there's not a lot here for me and I feel kind of alone mm. like, you don't I'm have any family nearby I'm not, no and the daycares are far like like groceries you know everything is far away so I just wanted like convenience for myself because it's going to be hard enough but um yeah we don't we're not really willing to pay for it anymore <laughs> so. yeah well if you did move closer to town you might need to you know compromise and settle and go all right this rental is good enough for this season that I'm in so that I can be closer to civilization as I raise this baby <laughs> while my husband is deployed. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. So yeah. I feel for you. But, you know, adding to the chaos of becoming a homeowner, I don't know if that's worth it right now. Yeah. Especially yeah, when you well, guys have are, 15 grand to, to your name. Home, so I have to take care of it by myself. We just, I just wanted something closer to town so that at least it was easier for me for running errands. Yeah. Now that's reasonable. And I hope you guys get this real estate situation sorted out. But, uh, you know, I would have some other, some other people look at the contract, get some other opinions. But I think at the end of the day, you just settle with them and go, I, we can do three. We can't do the full five. And if they want to waste their time coming at you for that, I don't know if they have a case, first of all, but. They you might know. have a case, but the the question, like you said, is it worth the brain calories and time calories to go after someone in, you know, Judge yeah. George court? It's for sure. <laughs> You'll be lucky to even make it to a Judge George court. You know? But it would be some small claim situation right there. But I'm Sheesh, so sorry, Taylor. I hate Taylor. that this is happening to you. Yeah, it was a dumb mistake we made, but we kind of panicked, so. Yeah. Well, we okay. always say on this show... Never, no one makes good decisions when they're panicked or drunk. That's right. And but you so, can always go back and try to settle it and see if, if they'll take something. But yeah, I mean, I would personally have some pity on a, you know, a, a soon to be mom, husband's getting deployed, serving our country. I'm going to go like, All right. I don't know, George, because when you're on the other side of it and you've got timelines, like, you know, she was super sweet, but I'm thinking about when Sam and I were moving here, you business. have a timeline. It's all business. And I'm like, if don't mess around and make an offer because- Time is money when it comes to this stuff. And I I was trying to understand what she was saying, but I think that, um, I think the seller, I think they have to have this deal closed and wrapped tight before they can legally accept another offer. Is that what was going on there? Is that why they were saying that they were losing time? I think right now it's contingent. 
and they can't make mm. it live and active again until this situation is sorted because this offer is still halfway out there. I see. I Guys, that's the issue. Just remember when buying a house, Ooh. I always say, George, you need that stacked deck and down payment. We know five to 20 percent earnest money that can be up to one to three percent of the purchase price. It's a lot of money. Also, think, keep in mind closing closing costs if you're going to be the buyer, two to five percent. And then the K stuff adds up. Keep and then you in got mind moving costs, appraisals, and then the repairs, inspections, and, woo, moving costs, like you said. Home ownership is no joke. So for those of you excited about it, make sure you got your ducks in a row before mm -hmm. you jump into this. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, you know this, but I'll say it anyway. College is freaking expensive and student loans are out of control. The average private student loan debt in 2023 was $55,000. So if you're in over your head with private student loan debt, don't beat yourself up. Look, we've all made mistakes with money in the past. What matters is doing something about it now. So if you're in distress with private student loans, that's private, not federal student loans, call Y Refi. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. To learn more about this custom refinancing option, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. show i'm george camel joined by jade warshaw we've got a fun event coming up this may 10th and 11th it's called total money makeover weekend a brand new event where in one weekend you'll get a crash course on everything we teach about money and no matter where you're at in your financial journey the baby steps this will light a fire under you like nothing else it's going to be interactive lots of q a's we are coming up with some really fun different talks jade than we've ever done before is trying that to spice what, it up is that what i heard you working on this morning yes Okay, for those Did of you, you hear listening, an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression? I heard some crazy, hilarious things, George. It was, that was, we're just workshopping. We're okay, just, we're trying okay. out some stuff. These people are in for a treat. I, I like it. It's going to be a blast. Every single Ramsey personality will be on the stage. It's a two-day event, Friday and Saturday, May 10th and 11th. We've got Smart Money Happy Hour on Friday night live. Nice, we love nice. a live audience for that with Rachel and I. So don't wait to get your tickets to Platinum Plus. Tickets are almost sold out. A handful left. Early bird pricing ends on Thursday of this week. So if you're planning on joining us, get your tickets now to save up to 100 bucks. Just go to RamseySolutions.com slash events and start plugging this into your every dollar budget. Plan for that transportation. It. It's a destination event here in Nashville. You'll have a great time. Plan for that Platinum Plus. That's well, gangster. I know. I like that. We, we keep coming up with new tiers just like to spice that. things up. RamseySolutions.com slash events is the place to go. All right. Let's go back to Levi in Springfield. Let's see if we can get him on the air. Levi, are you with us? I am. Thanks for Phew. taking my call. Oh, you, you left me on red, bro. I got nervous. <laughs> How can we help? How are you guys? Doing good. How are you? Oh, not too bad. I have a little bit, bit of an issue, though. Okay. Um, so my wife and I, we've been working through big set number two, and we've been making pretty good progress. And I just recently discovered that my identity had been stolen. Oh, yikes. And... I guess I'm just looking for some guidance on how to navigate that. How bad is it? Um, I'm not really sure. Hopefully not too bad yet. Um, I checked my credit report and there was nothing on there okay. that shouldn't be. been keeping an eye on my bank accounts and everything seems okay there. Um, what happened was they opened up a credit card in my name and then just a couple of days ago I got three phone bills sent to me for numbers that I do not own. So 
Man, that stinks. And I've been in your exact shoes, Levi. This is back in 2013. I had identity theft. They opened Shoot. up two cell phone accounts, AT&T, Verizon, racked up 1700 bucks on both, never paid a dime, using my social security number and an old address. Oh, shoot. Is it similar to you? Yeah, my social security number, but they're using my current address. That's why I'm getting all the notices. Man. So okay. have you frozen your credit yet? I just did that today. Okay, that's good. That's good. And did you have a fraud alert placed on all of your credit accounts? Um, no, because I haven't been able to speak with AT&T yet. Um, okay. it's impossible to speak with a human being with them, I guess. Uh, anyway, I, uh, filed a police report yesterday okay, and good. I want to keep trying to contact AT&T through to them. Um, but the credit card did put a fraud alert. The credit card company put a fraud alert on my. Okay. And they reversed the credit. charges. You want anything on any of that? Nope, there were no charges on the card. I caught it in time. Okay, okay, that's good. Have you filed a report with the Federal Trade Commission yet on their website, FTC? No, I have not. Okay, I would do that as well. And you've already okay. got the police report, so you're going to need that as you submit it to different you know, creditors and credit bureaus. You might need that. Okay. And outside of that, um, make sure you're checking all of your accounts regularly. Make sure you have a freeze on all three accounts with all three bureaus. Okay. And then beyond right. that, you want to get any account records from all of these. If there's a debt collector involved or AT&T, get every record you can get. That's the thing. What if AT&T doesn't cooperate with me on this? What steps do I need to take? Well, I mean, if you have a police report and you have the FTC mm -hmm. report, that should be enough to get them to go, oh, this wasn't him. I mean, I don't know how they okay. give you issue or cause you to – don't ever pay a dime for any of these accounts. Gotcha. Even if it goes to collections. Yeah, well – this is not your deal. Yeah, I wasn't planning on paying anything, but... And then did you already connect your... Talk to your bank? No, I haven't spoke to my bank yet. Okay. That'd be, that'd be my next move when I get off the phone with us. Let them know that this has happened because who knows what else they have, mm -hmm. but I would probably get a new account set up with a new Debit card, card do attached. everything, yeah. Okay. And also gotcha. contact your utility providers and let them know. Do I need to contact... Do I need to contact the Office of Social Security... If you think that, if you sus suspect that they have either your social security card, if you suspect that they have your driver's license, I'd contact social security, I'd contact the DMV, and maybe even, you know, if you think they might have your passport, like only you can suspect what you think's going on here and how you think they got their, your information. And so, you yeah, know. Yeah, I would, I would contact them on their website and see mm -hmm. if you can get a replacement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I know they don't have my physical cards, but... I don't think you can open up a phone line without a social security number. So that's just why I assume they have yeah. it. Yeah. They have an office of the inspector general and I'll send you that. We'll send you the blog post that outlines all the steps you need to take. Mm -hmm. I would also update your main passwords and usernames. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, for the future, ID theft protection is super important to have. We have it on every single team member here at Ramsey and ours is through our friends at Xander. So it's a, it's a, like an insurance. It's not, technically an insurance product, but it, that will help with all the restoration services that you need to get your life back. And it's super cheap. Like before I came here, I think I paid like 12 bucks a month. Yeah, for now it. it's, I think it's like seven bucks a month. Yeah. For and me and so, my husband. Yeah. Um, Levi will make okay. sure to send you that, the article that outlines all these steps, but man, the truth is it's just going to take uh, some time and effort to get mm -hmm. all this sorted out, but you're going to be okay. Yeah. I think okay, that, that I don't lose sleep help, over yeah. it. Having that ID theft protection is going to be really important going forward because a lot of times once your ID is stolen once, it's kind of like that information is out there and it's likely that it can happen again. So having somebody who's monitoring it all the time is a big, big deal. Yeah. And we'll hook you up we'll, um, um, with our friends at Xander as well and see what they can do about it after the fact to help you clean this up, man. Yeah. So sorry you're going through this. Ooh, be sure. To, hey, one other thing, be sure to monitor your tax return too. make sure oh, that they're yeah. not trying to get their their paws at that, because that is a pain in the you know what to Oof. go through. Yep. Thanks for the call, Levi. I appreciate it, man. And for everyone listening out there, if you want to check out that blog article that I wrote, it's called What to Do If Your Identity Is Stolen. It's on the Ramsey Solutions website, and we will put a link in the description and show notes wherever you're listening. So you can just scroll down there and click. And we'll make sure that Levi gets that as well. But be sure to check out Xander's ID theft protection. It really is a great way to make sure you're, you're covered, your family's covered. Mm -hmm. Again, it's like uh, I'm seeing here on their website, individual, 675 a month, 75 a year for so a whole family. It. 
It's 145 a year, 12.90 a month, and it has been it has saved my bacon uh, one or two times when that does right. happen. It's one of those yeah. things like home insurance. You hope you don't have to use it, but goodness, when it's there, and this la- this yeah. lady at Xander's handling everything for me, and I just submit all the paperwork. Mm-hmm. It just gave me a little bit of peace and yeah. confidence as I went along my business. I've never had my identity stolen. I've had a debit card. You know, like somebody gets your debit card number and tries to buy Xboxes, which oh, is yeah. what happened to Sam and I one Christmas Eve. But other than that, like never the extreme of like, they've got my social and they've got my... Well, if, it's almost like a like a home invasion. It's just such a invasion of your own privacy. Yeah. I, I mean, they're stealing from you at the at the... Most personal level. Yeah. And the truth is this happens so often that like rarely are you going to get the, I wanted my, these people to like go to jail and they're like, it do, doesn't work like that. <laughs> you want to see them taken away in handcuffs yeah. and I went yeah. full detective. I was like, I'm going to find out who these people are. My wife was like, please don't, don't do that. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. You're not John Wick. All right. You're not, this is not going to be some Liam Neeson <laughs> level, you know, revenge story. I'm learning that about you, George, that you really do like to get to the bottom of things. I'm thinking about another story you told me. I'm a nice guy (laughs) until I'm not a nice guy. But truly, it is is so, so funny. It is not a fun thing to deal with. And so you want to make sure, you know, with one of these ID theft protection services, what they're offering is, number one, real-time identity monitoring, instant alerts, the recovery work for every type of identity theft, and what's really cool, recovery of up to a million dollars in stolen funds. Wow. That's partially of what's covered with identity theft protection. So be sure to check it out uh, at RamseySolutions.com. You can find our identity theft protection help from our friends at Xander. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Thank you to my co-host, Jade Warshaw, all the folks in the booth. We got Skylar, Ben, Austin, Zach, Nathan, Bobby, all hanging out back there, keeping the show afloat. And you, America, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it. We'll be back before you know it. of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Campbell, joined by Jade Warshaw. It's your show, America, so call us up at 888-825-5225. We'll talk about your life and your money, and we'll tell you the truth, even if it hurts your feelings a little bit, because we care that deeply. Brandon kicks us off in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Brandon, welcome to the show. Hey, George, a big fan of yours. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on the show. Absolutely. Uh, came across came across your book, and it's changed the way my wife and I view money. So that's so that's cool the, to hear. That's that's the basis of our, our question. Um, ultimately, our question is whether or not we should go down to one car to pay off our debt. Wow. Um, we have three cars. One of them is a sports car, just a fun toy that's automatically sold. But my wife and I are trying to decide: should we go down to one car? to be out of debt as soon as the car sells or would that not be smart to do that? Do you have kids? Uh, yeah, we have a one year old. Okay. Um, and I'm a full time student Okay. and my wife works full time. Okay. So, and I'm guessing proximity, my, my mind goes to proximity because when, Mm -hmm. when my husband and I were getting out of debt, we went down to a one car family and we did it Mm -hmm. because my sister-in-law, my sister went down to a one car family and they did it with two kids. So we figured, okay. okay, we can do this. But I do think proximity matters, like uh, her being able to drop you off at school, you know, on her mm-hmm. way to work, those sorts of things. Do you see a world where that could take place? Yeah, um, it'd definitely be kind of hard, but she makes her own schedule. Um, and my parents have three cars, and there's a chance mm. that we might be able to borrow one of their cars for a month. Ooh. Um, that what, way, what would happen in that maybe, month? Um, so... We, we've literally just started the, like the process. So all we have is her student loans. Um, but we have about 10,000 set aside that we haven't put towards it yet. 
So but you have ten thousand cash. How Correct. much in total debt? Uh, twenty-eight. All right. Student loans, and between the two cars, um, based off of Kelly Blue Book, we could get twenty-five. So twenty-five hundred thousand. Twenty-five thousand for the wow. sports car yeah. plus the other car that you're planning on selling. Correct. Great. Correct. So between that um, plus your cash, you have thirty-five k. You knock out the student loans. You have seven left over. Right. We go purchase a five thousand dollar car. Yeah. I um, love this plan. But I then, think it's solid. Okay. I yeah, it's just it's a little nerve wracking, you know, having a kid going down to one car. Um, but even if like my question was, even if like we couldn't, buy, there's a chance we could borrow the car from my parents. But even if not, you think it's still smart? I think it's really for you to buy to, for you to drive the five thousand dollar car for a while. Uh, sorry, car. you're breaking up on us, Brandon. I'm I'm sorry. Just to go down to one car. Um, until we can... I mean, you could survive that for a few weeks, depending on how strong your marriage is. I think I could probably make it one week before it starts <laughs> really? to tear us apart. I, th I think that... Far, and my wife works here, by the way. Let me tell you, I'm just being honest. I think that people mm -hmm. don't consider it, and I think that they would be shocked. My husband and I were a one-car family for 10 years. We started, 10 years? Yes. We sold our car um, in 20, 2009, Sam, when we were getting out of debt, and... We st stuck to one car and then we had two kids and we still had one car. And when we moved here, when I joined Ramsey, I, we bought our second car. Wow. Yeah. It, so it can be done. It Brandon. just requires coordination. And it's one of those things <laughs> that when you first start out, it's uncomfortable because you're not used to it. But once you figure out your rhythms and your routines, it's like, yeah. A matter of fact, I got to the point where I was like, we don't need a second car. And well, here's an idea. Was like, I mean, you can role play this for the next week. You guys only use one car. See how it goes. Yeah. That's yeah, that's good. A good idea. As you get that's the other two listed and just live like that and see how it goes. And if it works out, keep doing it. But either way, I'd get that $5,000 card and just have it for now until you or upgrade a little bit later with cash. You're going to see savings okay. on insurance too, which is great. A lot of savings. Right. But all the cars are paid off? Yeah, all the cars okay. are paid off. The only debt we have is, uh, is the student loans. What's cool. the payments on the student loans? Uh, 260 well, it's between like five different student loans. Comes out to like two sixty seven, I think, a month. Oh, nice. So that I mean, that, that's great. Right. That's over three grand that you can put towards your savings goals, right? As you free up the payment. So I think this is a no brainer. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, you got it, man. That's a fun, fun call. I did not know Jade was a one car family. One car family for ten years. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, even Whitney working at Ramsey, I rarely get to commute with her. Our schedules are just all over the place. And now with a baby, it's like, well, you got to go home. I got to recording. But you guys work in the same place, George. You And I could get like rides from people, but I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I feel too guilty being like, hey man, can I get a ride again? You drive me home after work. Listen, I, I would take Uber. Like every once in a while on the weekend, we might have an issue and it's like, oh, I'll just get an Uber. And I remember my friend Fred would be like, why are you Ubering? Just call, like, we'll drive you. Like, we'll pick you up. I'm like, no, it's, I don't want to burden anybody else with it. See, that's my thing. We never viewed it as a burden. It was just like, all right, yeah, I'll just grab an Uber. That's why we need John Deloney to be like, you're not a burden to your friends. <laughs> Text him at 3 a.m. Ask for the ride to the airport. I'm like, bro. No, you hit a certain point. I feel like once you hit like 37, you can't ask people to help you move anymore. Thank and you. And you cannot, like, hitch a ride. <laughs> like Unless you're baby hey, step you two. Me up? Then I'll, I'll, I might help you move if you're in baby step two. Oh. But once you're out of that, just hire a mover. There, yeah, there's levels to that because I'm not moving stairs like an apartment. No. I'll help you put some things in a box. Well, George, I, when if a friend breaks something, I'm like, oh, gosh. But if the mover does it, I'm getting that money back. Yeah, you can, like, yeah, get funky you fresh know, with You know, when yeah. my buddy Joe helps me move and he breaks something, I'm like, well, that's stinks. It well, was, he was free. He was helping for free. What right. do I mean? Charge the guy? Yeah. So that part's stressful. <sighs> yeah, but, you have to pay them with something. Even if you're an adult, you have to have drinks or pizza or, like, there's got to be some form of payment. You can't just say, come help me move. Absolutely. Well, I was just reading a Consumer Reports article, which I'm a, I'm a paying member now, Jay. That's how you know I'm getting old. <laughs> George, you're different. I'm okay. getting old. This, I'm next up. <laughs> AARP is up next. <laughs> but they have a great article because we've been telling people the $5,000 car exists. Yeah, it does. And Consumer Reports had an article from February 14th, best used cars and SUVs for less than $5,000. There you go. And you wouldn't be shocked to hear the brands on here. Can you guess them? Toyota. Yep. Uh, Nissan. Nope. Ford. Nope. Uh, I was hoping you'd hit the major two. Uh, it rhymes with Ronda. Hyundai. Honda. Nope. Honda. Yep, there we go. 
Toyota and Honda took the top, uh, definitely. And Lexus was on there, too. And guess what? These cars are 20-year-old cars. I believe You know, that. it's an 06 Accord. It's the 04 Lexus ES. But you see these on the 04 road. 04 Avalon, 05 Camry. These are invincible cars. Yeah, these cars still will on outlive the road. me. 100%. RAV4, a 2001 Tacoma. You see a guy in a 2001 Toyota Tacoma? He's going he's places. Hard, yeah, he's He's hardcore. got work to do. Yeah. You see a guy in the brand new... F two fifty, yeah, that thing has not doesn't have a scratch on it, Jade. That you, guy's hauling mulch once a year from Lowe's. That's about the only thing he's doing with that. <laughs> you never see like old Volkswagens. You never see old Volvos. Yeah, you it's ever just, see a Saturn on the road? You're never. Like, this guy, my guy is still holding on. If you have a Saturn, I'm sorry. It's usually like in a Taco Bell <laughs> drive through at three a.m. Like this man has seen some things <laughs> if he's driving a Saturn around at three a.m. Oh man. And he's Ooh. in for some things if he's at Taco Bell. Well, listen, these cars exist. Are they 20 years old? Yes. Do they have 148,000 miles? Yes. Will they still go another 100,000? Yes. Dang right. So don't tell me that they don't exist. Just tell me you don't want to drive it. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost-sharing ministry. But listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Jade Warshaw. Friendly reminder, you can always visit us here at The Ramsey Solutions Worldwide Headquarters, just south of Nashville, Tennessee. If you're ever vacationing or you just want a fun trip, come through. We're uh, just about a half hour south of downtown Nashville. We do the show on the glass live. You can hang out for all three hours. There's a museum timeline wall, Mm -hmm. the Baker Street Cafe with free baked goods and coffee, uh, bookstore, a lot of fun. So make a visit. I just We just met a family with custom cricket shirts they made. <laughs> and That's the girl so cool. shirt said, we're on our way to Disney. Mom made us stop here. That's so funny. Which is so that creative. wins for the funniest shirt of the day. Well, it's worth noting because sometimes, especially if you watch the show on YouTube, it looks like we're like sitting in our chairs really fast and putting in our in-ears. It's because we go out in the lobby and meet everybody Twice and shake an hour. hands. And, yeah. and all the personalities do that, Dave included. So it's a fun time. We'll sign things, take pictures, just hang out. Uh, for a moment and it's always a good time so make a trip to nashville and stop by and see us why don't you it's time for our question of the day jade what do we have all right today's question comes from brandon in georgia he says i will graduate college debt free this semester because of an internship i will likely receive a full-time job offer of seventy thousand a year at a reputable company with a lot of room to move up that's good how does someone who leaves college debt free with a decent income, manage their money when it's their first time on salary. I don't have to pay rent or get I don't get want a, to have to pay. I don't want, to, thank you. I don't want to have to pay rent or get a car with debt while also having to save money for retirement at the same time. My biggest fear is wasting money renting before I, I feel I'm financially capable to take on buying or mortgaging a home. What's your advice? I I love this. I think this guy's just now getting started. He's got a nice career set up for himself. The first step is to get on a budget. Like that's numero uno. If you don't have an every dollar budget, you need to down one today. The free version's amazing, but the premium version is even better. So I'd say that that'd be his first thing. Um, He says, I don't want to have to pay rent or get a car with debt. So my next piece of advice is don't, you know, over here, we just say that we live a debt-free lifestyle and we draw a line in the sand and we don't borrow money. So for you, the next thing is to probably use that great income to start saving up for a car. And to answer your question about renting, 
I would rent for the time being. I'd get a couple of roommates, get a, get a couple of guys and just get used to living that adult lifestyle, right? You're getting up, you're going to work every morning, you're saving up for a car, you're on a budget, start getting your, your, your confidence built that you can live on what you make. And then at the right time, I would look at buying a home. I'd make sure that I have the right down payment in an area that's right for you with your job. And I would not look at renting as a negative because I feel like here you're kind of feeling that renting is a negative and I, it's not. It's just buying you time until you can afford to buy a house the right way. And that's truly what it is, George. Yeah, I'm just exhausted by this narrative that society and parents are telling young people, which is, Renting is a sin. It's a waste of money. You better get in a home as soon as possible. And I get the heart behind it. It's well-meaning. Yeah. yeah. But then it creates this, and it means people jump out of college at 22, and they're like, I need to buy a house even mm-hmm. though I'm not ready. Mm-hmm. Now, luckily, our friend Brandon has no debt making 70 k a year. Mm-hmm. That blows my mind. I wasn't That's making awesome. half of that when I got my first job out of I college. Know. I know. And I moved to Nashville, and what do you do? You get some roommates. Yeah. You get some side hustles. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that's a, a smart move. Be ready for the first month deposit, last month rent, whatever that is, uh, be ready for that financially. So I would just save up a bunch of cash Mm -hmm. and maybe work part-time so that when you graduate, even before that first paycheck hits, you're ready to make the move and go rent somewhere with some roommates. And renting, George, to your point, it does get a bad stigma and it's it's not a bad thing. My husband and I rented for over 10 years before we bought a house and our situation was different. We were trying to pay off almost half a million dollars of debt, but in many ways I can liken it to what's going on right now because the housing market is so expensive that people feel like I'm never quote, I'm never going to be able to buy a house. And I'm like, you will be able to, instead of it taking three years or four years, it could take six or seven or seven or eight or eight or nine or 10. Like there is part of this that I just want people to feel encouraged that just because a journey takes longer, doesn't mean you won't make it to the finish line and doesn't mean it's not worth it uh, to rent until you get there. Amen. And last thing I'll say, Brandon, if you're listening, and I hope you are, is when you go from making nothing to making $70,000, the life hack is to keep living like you make nothing. Keep living on less than you make. If you can learn to live off of 20 grand when you make 70, you're going to be unbelievably wealthy. But for most people, they just fill in the gap. They make 70, we're just gonna spend the 70. And, or they spend 80. Mm. That's the American story right there. And so if you can avoid that, Avoid lifestyle creep, avoid the comparison culture and lifestyle. You're going to be just fine, my friend. So great question. Love that. For any young person that's listening, someone about to graduate, send them this call. It could change everything. All right, let's get to the phone lines. Philadelphia is up next. Angela joins us there. Welcome, Angela. Hi, how are you? Doing well. Thank you for having me on the the show. Absolutely. What's going on today? So my question. My question is around student loans and emergency funds. So I, I'm older. I have a pretty decent salary. Um, I contribute to my 401ks. I have brokerage accounts. And my issue is my mentality around um, dumping all of my emergency fund into my student loan. So I have exactly the amount to pay off my student loan in my emergency fund, but I am terrified to start over again. <laughs> How old are you? Building that emergency fund. Uh, 41. And how many, how much do you have in student loans? $50,000. $50,000? Let me tell you what's oh. terrifying. Having $50,000 in student loans decades after you graduated? When did you graduate? So this is from grad school. And so that would be like 10 years ago. Ooh, okay. Girl, listen, yeah. I, I, I have two ways that I like explaining this. One is just math. Okay. Math. It's yes. really just the math for me because if you think that On you have a balance fi- sheet, yeah. If you if you say that you have fifty thousand dollars and that's what's keeping you warm at night, the math would differ and and it would disagree yeah. with you because technically, that you owe that whether you admit it or not, you owe it to. I know. You know. So there's <laughs> yeah. that piece of it. But I I, I also. Yeah, but I'm worried about, um, like, if something were to happen with my house where I literally need, like, $5,000 for something. or So how much do you that. make every month? Um, about seven. I probably bring home about seven. And is it just you? Yes, it's just me. Okay. Yep. And how much was your student loan payment? Um, so last year, I really, after, like, just really getting into my finances and, make, and just making sure that I'm, like, doing what I'm supposed to do, I really, I upped the payment. So right now my student loan payment is actually, it's, this isn't something I chose. It's $1,500 a month because okay. I can afford that. So, so I think, really am trying to knock it out, but I'm like, do I just 
stay this three to five year course that they have me on? Or do I no. Just no. Angela, right the now? whole point that I'm trying to make to you is you make $7,000 a month. It's just you. Your student loan payment alone that you've chosen to pay is $1,500. Which means if next you month this you free today, up $1,500. How quickly could you, pay, could you save up $5,000 and get that cushion back under you that you want? Yeah, that's fair. Yep, that's fair. You'd save it so quickly. Plus, I'm guessing there's probably, if you wanted to get really intense. I know there's more margin somewhere in the $7,000 that you could stack that up even oh, yeah. faster. Right now you're Absolutely. living in the way I like to describe this. It's like the student loan house, like on the, on the inside, it's like modern and beautiful and the payment's not that much. And you know, you've got 50,000 saved and you just think that there's like this beautiful landscape in front of you. But the minute you open up the door, you're like on a cliff. And like, be yeah. like, it's just your one false move is, and you're falling off a cliff, and the sun is burning you up, and it's just like doomsday yeah. out there. And as long as you stay in the house, you're fine. But your body knows that you're in danger yeah. and that you're on this cliff. And as John Deloney says all the time, your body keeps the, sto- the score. And so I really do yes. think that there's a toll that we pay mentally and psychologically and physically and it- inside of our bodies for having this debt. Yeah, and it is definitely more of a mental toll because I've worked so hard. I'm just like, oh, I could just pay this off. But also it's like, but then you will have nothing. I no, will have nothing. And I that think that's a lie really that your nervous. brain is telling yourself. You will yeah. have something. Yeah. You'll have your income back yeah. and you'll have savings, the same savings that you had in a matter of a few short months if you get after it. You'll be there. You that's stack fair. up the money you're putting toward the payment in an emergency fund with your amazing income. And how much do you have in the brokerage account? Um, I, well, I have some a four hundred one k, but I think my brokerage has about eighty thousand dollars. Oh right my now. goodness! You're good. You're fine. This is paranoia. If you don't pay <laughs> this off today, we're so proud of you. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 40% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. This is The Ramsey Show. If you like what you hear, please consider subscribing, leaving a review, or hitting the follow button, sharing it with a friend, maybe a text a link. Whatever it is, we appreciate it. You guys are the best marketing plan we have out there, and we so appreciate the millions of you that listen faithfully every week, and you tell your friends about it, and they add it to their repertoire of podcasts or shows or YouTube, and all of a sudden, you know, life change starts happening, and they start getting excited about what could be with their money situation, and it all could start with you. So thank you guys so much for sharing the show. Dakota is up next in Phoenix, Arizona. Dakota, what is happening? Hey, guys. Thank you for having me on. Um, So I have about $60,000 worth of debt, and I was hoping to get some guidance from you guys on where I should go next. Okay. What kind of debt is this? So I have two car loans, a car for myself and my wife uh, that total just uh, about $30,000. And I have uh, a business that my business partner walked out on. So I'm owing him the rest of that money uh, debt as well. So $30,000 to him. Like a buyout from the business? Exactly, yes. 
That's 30K. What's the arrangement for that 30K? Um, so I, I work in a, an industry that the monthly income varies just a little bit. So I have the leeway to pay me their 500 or $2,000 a month. Obviously, I'm trying to get it done as quick as possible, but it's hard to with the uh, varying income. Interesting. So what do you bring in every month? Not just you, but your um, wife as well. So uh, we bring in anywhere from 6000 to $8,000 a month. Okay. And um, these cars, so you said together they're worth thirty k. Can you split them out for me so I can Yes, I have them? a Toyota Tacoma, a 2019, that's uh, $20,000. Uh, and then uh, she just got a, a new, uh, not new, but it's a used Hyundai Elantra. Uh-huh. That's a 2019 as well. I think there's $14,000 on that. Okay. So 34 um, between the two. If you were to mm-hmm. sell the $20,000 car, would it bring anything? Uh, or are you upside I down? $10,000. I have like $10,000 in equity in it right now. Okay. I might consider getting out of one of these car notes, especially since you've okay. got, you could get something for one of them. Yeah. And my only hesitation about doing that is I, I live in Arizona, but I work in California and I just want to make sure that I have reliable transportation to get there. Well, you said if you sold it, it'd bring 10000 mm-hmm. Yes. So that's what you would net? So it's worth 30 yeah. you owe 20 yeah, and that's that's private. I, I'll probably get a little bit less selling it to a dealership. I was somewhere okay. like seven or so. There's some money yeah. there to get a reliable vehicle, and if I mean, think about it. Your your wife's vehicle is only four thousand more. So if you were to yeah. if you were really up against it, you guys could switch for a little while until you get right side up on this debt. Yeah, luckily she works from home, but I just I feel bad leaving her out here without a car. My parents aren't exactly no. You'd be getting a ten thousand dollar car. Oh, oh, I got you. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay, that that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah okay. I mean, what kind of business are yeah. you in? Uh, I own a tattoo shop. Okay. And you travel for that? Yeah, yeah. So the shop, luckily, it, it pays for itself. The shop, uh, I mean, it, so the shop itself has a savings as well, but I just don't want to touch that just in case anything does happen. I know I have to replace the floor soon and right. all that. I've never really had this much debt in my life, so I'm a little bit uh, anxious to say the least. <laughs> no, and I you think have no that... savings for yourself? Uh, we have a personal savings of somewhere around three or $4,000. Okay. okay. But I've literally emptied my bank account. Um, I mean, I, I have some other, like, investments, like, somewhere around, like, $8,000 with a precious metal that I have vaulted with the company, but, like, that's about it. Well, I'm getting rid of that. Yeah, I'm, I'd I'm probably dump the precious in. metal and take 3000 from your pile in savings and go get yourself a reliable car with cash after you okay. sell yours. And th- what's your okay. payment on that? Uh, my monthly payment on my truck is $600 a month, it's probably 800 total with insurance. So you'll free up that money as mm-hmm. soon as you sell this thing. Yeah. Which is going to add a whole bunch so, to your income every month, which will help you get rid of the business debt and get rid of her car loan. And so mm-hmm. you can see how this thing snowballs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm so anxious not to have like that security net, you know, because that's all the cash I have. And I don't want to touch the business. Security net? You got $64,000 <laughs> in debt. That makes me anxious. Yeah, that too. <laughs> not a piddly savings okay. account. Yeah. Yeah, true. So I'm getting rid okay. of the precious metals. I'm cashing out on that. You'll be lucky to get, I mean, precious metals aren't a great, quote, investment. Mm-hmm. So you'll be lucky to get out of that what you put into it. What'd you say it was, 8000 yeah. yeah. Listen, you take that money, you take 3000 and you, you're, I mean, you're almost out of this car note with your wife. You sell your car, you take that 10000 buy yourself something in cash. This is happening yeah. really quickly with the cars, and then you've got you're on the hook for thirty thousand, and then with that you freed up six hundred dollars from your car note. How much is her car note? Uh, I think it's like two hundred and seventy a month. Okay, so you said with insurance six seven eight. So you've got an extra thousand dollars that you're going to bring to the table relatively soon to pay off this thirty thousand. Okay, that's not bad. So okay. I would set an aggressive goal yeah. that scares you just a little bit. Where you're like, all right, by this date, I will be completely debt free if I just commit to this plan. Okay. What well, do you think a reasonable like 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 four or five months like that intense? Or well, like, once you have the thirty k left for the business debt, then go. All right, I can put uh you know four k a month towards this and be done in seven and a half months. And so it depends yeah. on when you make your budget using every dollar. That will show you exactly mm-hmm. how much margin you should have if you follow the budget. Okay. So it's it's gonna be you know a, a few months where you're like we can't go out to eat we mm-hmm. got to cut some subscriptions yeah. we got to sell things laying around that have been collecting dust some old tattoo shop equipment we no longer use and let the fact that you is. let the fact that you only have a thousand dollars saved be the thing that 
just lights the fire under your butt to get to to keep going intensely at this right like you said it makes you feel like you're out there to only have a thousand dollars saved and it should it should make you feel like holy moly i gotta get my life together yeah no doubt and you're you're a tattoo artist i assume yes that's correct so can you make any extra side money Oh, no. I mean, uh, I'm sure like, once I get the business, you know, or I get the, rid of the car payment, one or the other, I'll be able to throw some extra income from the business towards that loan as well. But, yeah. but could you open, let's say, Sunday afternoons? I'm going to do some extra hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right now I'm working five days a week, uh, but I, I try to come home as often as I can to see my wife because uh, I only get to see her maybe five days every two weeks because of the split between the business partner and all that. You know, I was supposed to be two weeks on, two weeks off. Yeah, I'd figure out a way to create a more stable life where you're not having to travel as much yeah yeah that should be part of this part (laughs) part of this getting financial stability is how do Mm -hmm. i just change my lifestyle yeah what does it just look what does it look like to do tattoos in your area and to uh i mean i'm i'm so sorry that's okay uh i mean uh, we stay pretty busy as a shop um i make 150 dollars an hour and i typically do two tattoos a day um but obviously with economic slowing things have kind of taking a little little uh step back unfortunately mm-hmm. <laughs> nobody has stimulus checks anymore so it's not as busy as it was but yeah i see what you're saying so for me that looks like uh understanding okay how long am i going to let myself be in a situation where i'm not making enough to make a living and what can you do in the meantime to fill in that gap mm-hmm. are you investing okay. at all right now uh my my precious metals were the only investment that i really had Okay. I would pause all investing until you get this debt cleaned up. Once you have the debt cleaned up, then we have to build a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. So if your expenses are $4,000 a month, let's call it six months. You need twenty four grand in that account so that you have a force field okay. between you and life. And then you never have to touch okay. debt again. Yeah. Because I know the, the shop has at least like four or five months uh, where it can operate just on savings alone. And then, uh, yeah, just my personal stuff, I maybe have like one or two months. Good. Between uh, everything I have, but yeah, okay. Yeah, the I similarities between your personal life and business are, are strong, where you go, all right, if I can run this thing debt-free with a pile of money in the bank to protect me, it's going to be a lot more peaceful. I still had questions, because he's got, he's got the shop, but he's traveling. Is he just traveling to well, do individual tattoos for, Dakota, uh, for singular Tell me if I'm wrong, clients? but you're going to the other shop to do tattoos? Uh, no, when I'm, when I'm out in Arizona, it's just spending time with my wife. Uh, and then uh, when I go back home, I, I work. So the shop is not near your wife. So there's oh, the problem. We need to move yeah. your family to where your work is. That's what we need to be looking yeah. at in the future. How far away are they? Uh, it's about four hours. Goodness oh, gracious. Okay. There's, Why not just there, start a tattoo? There, there. Okay. Can you start a shop right by your house? Uh, unfortunately not. Most of my clientele that I've built, I, I've had to in California for 10 years now. And uh, oh, starting over, man. I'll be sitting around waiting. Dude, yeah. time to build some new clientele. This is not a life that's sustainable, man. Thanks for the call. This is The Ramsey Show. show i'm george camel joined by jade warshaw reminder that we've got some great shows on the ramsey network when you're done with this one so check them out at our website ramseysolutions.com we've got the rachel cruz show ken coleman show dr john deloney show i've got a smart money happy hour with rachel cruz that's a fun one we're recording right after we're done with this show so that'll be a good time and then a youtube channel that i launched Uh, less than a year ago that's gone gangbuster so check it all out we have no shortage of content you can't you can't point at us and go those ramsey people just not enough no it's a wide variety hours a day and uh jade will soon one day hopefully have a show one day i can't wait to see what it is listen i got a gleam in my eye just let me be a guest that's all i ask of course hey i'm gonna be on your show remember the little people that's right jade like a week made an appearance on uh the george camel youtube channel people loved it Right, right. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Frederick joins us in San Diego. What's going on, Frederick? 
Hi, guys. Um, thanks for having me. I, I purchased a home in 2021 for 500000 with a 2.5 interest rate, and it's now appreciated to 750000 hey. I'm thinking about selling it and getting a bigger home because my family's growing. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. How many bedrooms is your current home? Uh, it's three bed and two and a half bath, and we have our second child actually due this week, probably today or tomorrow, actually. Whoa. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, very exciting. Um, And just thinking about getting into a four-bedroom. My wife and I are hybrid workers, so things are getting a little cramped here, and our backyard's a little small. So just just think about taking that equity, rolling it into a house a little bit more north and getting more house. What would that do? um, Have you ran the numbers out as far as monthly payment and what percentage of your monthly payment it might be? Um, so looking at the houses, if, if we're to do a $750,000 house for all the equity in, we still owe right around the same, uh, but the interest rates being like 6.5 to 7.5% now, my mm-hmm. monthly payment would go up maybe like 300 bucks. Which okay. Isn't like te- Is that terrible. a 30 year or a 15? That's a 30. I know you guys love 15. Aha. <laughs> whomp, whomp, whomp. Got him. Well, what would it look like, since you guys are making this move anyways, to to move to that 15-year? Would that be, what percentage of your income would that be, of your take-home pay? Oh, man, I, I haven't done the math, to be honest, on the 15. It'd um, probably be almost. Were... I'd crunch it. Yeah. yeah. And it's not to be a rule follower. I just, I think the goal should not just be to upgrade a home, but to be completely debt-free and own that home outright. And the fastest way to do that, and... The cheaper way to do that is with a 15-year, not in payment, but as far as what you'll pay in interest, the interest rate will likely be lower. Mm -hmm. And so I think long-term, you'll be grateful you did that. As long as you guys are in a good financial spot, do you have no debt with an emergency fund? Uh, We have an emergency fund, uh, but we do have two cars. Oh. Uh Uh-oh, this this equation (laughs) is getting worse and worse, Frederick. (laughs) Are you regretting the call? (laughs) No. (laughs) No, I really do think that, uh, you know, what George and I are saying, we just want to set you up for success financially. So I would look into paying off these cars before we make that move and get under an even more stable financial footing. And then I would not upgrade house unless I was also willing to upgrade to a 15 year fixed rate mortgage, which for you is, let's be honest, that's gonna feel very, it's gonna feel like whiplash because you're used to having that lower mortgage monthly payment. You're looking at the monthly payment and we're all about, like you said, George, paying this thing off in the long haul. When we look at a car, we never go, well, what's the lowest payment? That's broke people talk. People go, well, what is the total cost of the car and can I afford it? And so obviously we don't yell at you for the 15 year f- fixed mortgage, but I think, uh, you know, looking at what it would take to get rid of these cars and what's in your emergency fund, that would be a good first step. So how much are the car loans total? Uh, so the, we have two vehicles. Um, I think total we owe right around 65. And I'm what's your thinking. household income? Um, I make a hundred and my wife makes right around 90. Awesome. So we have a great income, mm-hmm. but we got a lot of car, man. That's a lot of payment. Is that a thousand bucks a month yeah. in payments at least? Yeah, yeah, we're we're pretty much right there. The other caveat to this, I was thinking, is I could rent out my house and then just no, rent I don't think so. <laughs> That's a lot of risk and stress in my book. Taking on two mortgages and hoping that it all works out perfectly. Uh, we've taken that call where it doesn't work out perfectly. And so that's why we steer people away from that one. What does it look like for you guys? I'm just looking at what you said. You have a $500,000 house. It's three bedroom, two and a half bath, and you're about to have Mm -hmm. your second child. Correct. Okay. So one bedroom is for you. Your two kids share a bedroom and you've got a bedroom. That's an office. That's is that the plan right now? But my wife, my wife also works from home too, so it's just <laughs> okay. So the then that means court. somebody's in the living room or someone's in the. You guys are having Working to, in the laundry yeah. room. I yeah, exactly. Mm, I, I I personally, and this is you know, you're a grown man. You'll go away and do what you feel. But I personally would not. I've had two 15 year fixed rate mortgages, and I'm astonished how quickly you pay it off because of how much of the payment is going towards int- uh, t- the principal as opposed to interest every month. And I think that you'll just be blown away and if you'll you do end that up for paying the first time. Pro- likely six figures less in interest on the 15-year versus Easy. the 30-year when you crunch the numbers. And that will make you want to throw up, seeing how much money you're throwing away to the lender to bless them. So that's another reason I'd look at that. But Frederick, you told me a 15-year, man, that'd be tight. And I'm going, 
Well, if you freed up the thousand dollars from the car payments, that fifteen year payment wouldn't seem so scary, would it? No, no, it'd definitely be probably way more reasonable. <laughs> and that's where I go, like, I think you guys can do the fifty you make one ninety. I think it's reasonable to, to do that fifteen year, but we need to get rid of these cars. And if that means we gotta sell them and downgrade for now, I mean if you have enough equity and you can have some net profit out of this, it might not be a bad idea. How much do you have in the emergency fund? Uh we have right around three months worth. Um, so I think we have close to twenty, twenty thousand right now. Okay. What do you think you'd get for these cars? You think you could get sixty five or seventy or seventy five? Uh, well, so we would probably be under on the cars just because it was, uh, and we purchased them brand new. That was the, mm, they depreciate <laughs> the fastest when they're brand new. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, with our parameters, there's nothing wrong with keeping these cars, but I think it's holding you back from mm -hmm. that next step, which you told me you urgently want to get into a house and you got the, the new baby. To me, the baby trumps the fancy car. And therefore I might still consider selling those cars and purchasing something with cash. Even if you can get what you put yeah. into it and you use 19 out of your 20 in savings to go get you two cheaper cars, you both work at home, not a ton of travel happening, that might be the move so that you can get into that house faster. I think so. And honestly, like I'm just looking at numbers. If you're looking at a $700,000 house, that's what you're looking at, right? Mm -hmm. And you're putting the 250 down that you're getting from the sale of the other house. You're rolling it mm -hmm. all over, right? Yep. Okay, 15-year fixed rate. I don't know what your mortgage rates, you know, I don't know what the rates are and everything, taxes and everything, but I'm looking at Tennessee, 6.7% 6 .7 mortgage rate, taxes, fees. It puts you at 4,900 a month. And I'm looking at what you said, 190K is your gross. Yeah, what's yep. your current mortgage? Uh, current mortgage, I'm paying 3,300 a month. And you're right saying now. it would go up to about 4,100 on a 30 year? Right around, yeah, I think it was at 3900 was going to be the... Okay. Mm -hmm. And this puts you at 4900 so a 1000 so bucks more. And that's exactly what your car payments are, if not a little less. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is very doable, mm -hmm. but we just have to trade in paying lenders for these cars into let's build equity and get this house paid off. Mm -hmm. That's the trade-off, and that's a worthy trade-off. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for the call, man. I hope you do it because I'm excited. I get excited yeah. when I see people trade in the payments they were making. We say, you know, if you want to do interest right, wealthy people earn interest, broke people pay interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. And so when you get rid of those payments, you free up $1,000. Yeah. For most people, it's more than that when you add up all of the debt payments That's in their right. life. And instead, you use that to build wealth and pay off the house and invest. The numbers start to just... Boggle your Boggle mind. Boggle the mind. Yeah, that's so true. And if you don't believe me, go into RamseySolutions.com, use our free investment calculator, mm -hmm. and add up what your debt payments are and put that as the monthly contribution and do that from your age up to 62, 65. Ooh, mind's blown. 8 to 10% return. Thank me later. You'll be like, oh my gosh, let's pay off the debt today, honey. <laughs> we could be bajillionaires. Yeah. It's so worth it. I'm just thinking about owning a house in 15 years as opposed to 30. Absolutely. You know? Don't give yourself wiggle. That's what we hear. Well, you got to give yourself wiggle room. Uh-uh. We got the emergency fund. Get out of here with that wiggle room. Miss me with that. This is The Ramsey Show. headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Campbell, joined by Jade Warshaw. This is your show, America. Give us a call at 888-825-5225. You can't text us, you can't tweet us, you can't X us, you can't TikTok us. You gotta call the number with your handy-dandy phone. It still makes calls, I found out. It does. Still do it's it. It's not just an internet. Although, I'll be honest, I don't like when I get calls now. Unless it's from my mom or my wife or grandma, I don't pick up. Yeah, don't call me. And definitely don't call me and then text me, call me after you've called me. 
Wow. I don't All like right. that. I didn't know Jade felt that way, but now we know. 888 5225 Malaysia kicks us off in San Antonio. What's going on, Malaysia? Hi, guys. Um, so my husband and I are about over $100,000 in debt, and uh, we have a baby on the way. And all kinds of debt, just kind of overwhelmed and don't know where to start. Mm. What kind of debt do you have? Can you list it out for us? Um, so about 40000 in credit cards, um, 20000 in student loans, which um, haven't kicked in yet because I'm still currently in school. Okay. Um, so I haven't started paying on those yet. When do you graduate? Um, he, uh, next 2025. Okay. Keep going. And then... Um, he has a truck. We're both small business owners, so he has a truck that he uses. He does general contracting. That's 35000 he just got um, six months ago. And then we have a Mazda that we're about to finish paying off. That's 2000 left on that. I have a Jeep that's 25000 And then with his business, um, he kind of fell behind in paying the taxes. So from 2022, he owes the IRS about 5000 on that and then this past year he is going to have to pay taxes you know at the end of the year because he didn't pay throughout the year Uh and then with um what is it the um insurance we make too much to qualify for medicaid so we have to pay for the health insurance and then the max out of pocket for the um delivery is going to end up costing us about nine thousand dollars okay that's your max out of pocket okay good so we got well over a hundred thousand yeah okay so I'm, I'm, getting ahead, rid of, I'm getting rid of every car on okay. this list. That's what I'm looking at. Except for that one that's got 2000 paid off. I don't believe that he needs a $35,000 truck to do general contractor work. No way. Do you agree or disagree, Malaysia? I do agree. Um, he, was, he was actually using the Mazda prior, so that's why we ended up getting the Jeep is because the Mazda is like, Kind of trashed out at this point. Yeah, it has a lot of miles on it. He like ran it into the ground, and then he's like, "Okay, I need to, I need to get an actual work truck." Okay, but so he didn't need to spend thirty five thousand. Let's be honest about that. Right. And he didn't need to go thirty five thousand yeah. into debt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some of this we can clean up. Some of it we have to crawl out of. What did you spend forty thousand okay. dollars on with the credit cards? Um, that was accrued over years. Um. Just like a bunch of different things. I used to have a RV and I ended up putting a down payment on the credit cards and then I sold the mm-hmm. RV, but then I still paying off the credit cards. And then when we got engaged, we bought the ring with credit card. Girl. Just a bunch of stuff. I Can know. we both agree that your life is stressful and that you guys work too hard to yes. live this insanity? Yes, absolutely. What are you earning? What are the two of you earning? Tell me yours and tell me his, um, please. So my business, I just started like maybe less than a year, like maybe six to eight months ago. So I'm trying to still figure out the numbers. Um, but no, 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 is- no, no. That's an excuse. What have you been earning okay. on average when you take all the average months together and average them out? What would you say that you earn? What per are you month? paying yourself? Um, maybe like two thousand a month. Okay. And what about your husband? Um. Because his berries as well. Um, it's just, it's hard to say because you didn't set No, it's not. What him. did he make last month? Um, so it's been slow because it's like winter time still, but we're start, it's starting to warm up and pick up a little bit more. Um, Neither of you should be like running a business 5, if you don't know how much you made last month. Last here's a, month he made about 5000 Okay. Here, here's what I think's going on, um, and I'm just going to call a spade a spade. I'm glad you called. We want to help you. But when I ask somebody how much their business made and they go, ah, uh, it's because in that moment you're realizing I'm this is, this is part-time or this is a hobby because you're realizing in that moment that although you're passionate about it, it's not making enough to sustain your household. And I think with your business, as much as you love it and as much as a, it's a passion, right now you're making $24,000 a year before taxes. And so mm-hmm. it's it's not a business yet. It's something that you're good at and it's something you love. But as long as you're making 2000 bucks a month, you got to have a full-time job on top of that. This Right now, this is the side hustle and you've got to add another job. What are you and, going to school for? Um, so it's like multidisciplinary studies, which is focusing in business, communication, and health. 
And what's that going to do for you as far as your career? Well, because I have my business and I feel like it's a good backing towards me being in business myself. Like I've been learning a lot more, um, taking the classes that I have been taking and then the communication behind it because I'm like, you know, the person running everything I'm learning about. But why was now the time to go get, go into student loan debt to get this degree? I had started that prior. I've been like doing that along the way. And I'm just kind of like, I want to finish and get my degree. Cause I, cause I went to, um, I get my associates and I was like, well, I just want to finish and get my bachelor's. So what's the plan? You told me you graduate in 2025. What's the plan to pay for school from now until then for the next um, year? Just like, I don't know, just kind of. Yeah, you do. That's okay. what got us here. Hey, I, get- I got to call this out. You got to stop saying you don't okay. know. Because you do know, you just okay. don't want to say. You know that you were planning on taking out student loans the same way that you knew yeah. that your pay wasn't enough to qualify as a full-time job in the same way that you know that your husband's pay is not enough to qualify as a full-time job. Don't say you don't know because we can't solve the problem unless we are willing to look at it and go, this is the problem, say it out loud, and then you know. The problem mm-hmm. right now is debt, and not only debt, but you guys have not decided to stop going into debt yet. Because you still decided I'm going to take on debt to go, you know, to finish my education. So let's just be honest about it. We're not mad at you. We just want to be honest because we can't help you unless we're honest. And the same thing with your income. You guys have got to bring in more money because here's the thing. If you choose to keep borrowing money, that income better be on it because who's going to make the payments? Right. So what we want is to get you to a point where you're not borrowing money, you're paying off your existing debt and you're using your income that is increasing over time in order to do that. When is the baby due? Okay. Um, September. Okay. Right now we're in stork mode. We got to save up cash because you guys have none of it. And we need to make sure that we can cash flow all these medical expenses so we don't go further into debt. In the meantime, I'm looking into selling all these cars and getting whatever we can get with cash to get us by until then. Mm -hmm. I want this baby to grow up in a debt-free home that is not filled with chaos. And I don't know that I can say that right now because it feels like your life is going to be chaos unless we make some drastic changes. Yeah. And start paying your taxes. Quarterly estimated payments to the IRS. There's no need for this to be a surprise every single April that we're going to be in $5,000 in debt to the IRS. We don't want that. Thanks for the call, Malaysia. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Jade Warshaw. Let's face it, guys. Taxes are confusing, and uh, they're no fun. And if you buy into some of the tax service ads out there, you'll believe you'll never get a grasp on taxes and you shouldn't even try. Or maybe even worse, they suck you into offers that won't help you win with money. But we think you deserve the truth around here, so here's today's tax tip. Are you ready? A tax refund is not a bonus. It's not? Sorry to burst your tax bubble there, Jade. It's a (laughs) refund, meaning it was your money all along and you earned that money. You just happened to loan it to Uncle Sam interest-free because of of your generosity. Wow. So if you get a big tax refund, sure, you can have some fun with it and spend it and go on a vacation and buy stuff you don't need. Or you could, I don't know, make sure that you advance your financial journey. There you go. And uh, apply it to your next baby step. That's the smart thing to do. So here's what you need to do. Adjust your paycheck withholdings if you keep getting these big refunds so this doesn't happen again. You want to get as close to zero. Mm -hmm. So people that are like, I owed $7. I'm like, that's a win. Let's celebrate. Yeah. I got a refund of $4. That's great. That's a win. Let's celebrate. That means you're doing it right. So if you haven't already filed, make sure you work with a service you can trust. If you've got a complicated tax situation, get a Ramsey Trusted Tax Pro on your side. And if you're comfortable filing on your own with the software out there, check out Ramsey Smart Tax. It's not like the other guys, Jade. It's low upfront pricing, no hidden fees, no agendas. We're not going to bait and switch you at the end because you had an extra form. Right. 
It's exactly what we say it's going to do, and it's exactly how much you think you were going to pay. So go to RamseySolutions.com slash tax, and we can help you figure out what situation is best for you. That's RamseySolutions.com slash tax. It's a lot of money on the table for some people. That is. Are you getting your taxes done yet? Uh, yeah, they're, everything's turned in. And just waiting to hear, you know, that that magic number. Did we make it? Did we do it? That's right. Think about it, though. Think about the tax returns you've gotten in the past and divide it by 12. And essentially, that's the money that That you would receive back into your monthly flow, which is... So if you get a six grand refund, that just means you need 500 bucks back in your life every month Ooh, that the that, government hung on to. That's a raise. Especially when everyone's feeling like money's tight. I'm yeah. like, but you're cheering about your refund. I don't think people realize that it's their money all along. Yeah. <laughs> I think they think it's the government giving them it some gift. reminds me of that old commercial. It's my money and I want it now. Yeah. Good job, George. Is that's that a good J. one. J.G. Wentworth? J.G. Wentworth. I, I love it. they're still around. Good that's for them. So good. Holding good job, it down. George. J.G. All right. Matthew's up next in Raleigh, North Carolina. Matthew, how can we help you today? Yeah, I'm Matthew Davis. I'm a pleasure to talk to you all online. Um, So I'm 43 years old. Um, I've been working in law enforcement for the last 20 years. My wife, I'm married and have a wife and two kids. I have a 12-year-old daughter and a 6-year-old daughter. Um, I'm completely debt-free and have been for the last six months, including my house. That's awesome. Wow. Um, so my question is, um, with pension plans, um, I got about eight and a half years to, I can fully retire. Um, and my pension will be at least $5,500 a month, um, at my current pace right now, it'll probably be higher than that. Okay. But, um, so how does that factor in to my retirement, like my 401k, because I'm currently saving um, substantial amount of money because basically after I paid off all my debt, I just kicked it in overdrive with savings and everything. What's your nest egg? Um, so currently I have, my wife has 200 and 401k. I have 135 in my 401k. Okay. Um, the Roth RA, we have, she has 13.5. I have about 18 or uh, excuse me, 8,000 in my we're off. Okay. Um, we have seventy five thousand in just savings accounts. Okay. So is the question? Um, you said in eight years you'll be able to retire from law enforcement. So that puts you at fifty one. Yeah, it should be fifty one, fifty two. And what's the plan after that? When you stop law to enforcement. Go- to go get another job. Okay. So um, something that I don't have to work nights and weekends mm-hmm. and uh, that'll be more on my schedule. But, you know, I, I plan to keep working until I'm at least 60, 60, between 60 and 65. I'll cool. Quit. What's your household used to earning? Um, my wife currently makes about 93. I'm My base is 94. Um, I work a substantial amount of extra duty. Um, our last year we made 247,000. Okay. Awesome. And what's that translate to monthly? Um, I don't know that number. Um, so it's, it varies because some months I work more, uh, off duty than other months, but roughly. What's a round number? Like 15 grand a month ends up in your bank account or what? Yeah. That sounds about right. Okay. Okay. So what's your. We got a good financial snapshot here. So what's your what's your overarching question? So my overarching question is like I feel like I have to keep working 80 hours a week in order to keep living uh, the lifestyle that we're living. Um and it's not just like like to keep saving at the the rate and I don't know if the the saving at the same rate that I'm saving at currently is completely necessary with the pension plan that I do have. Or if I'm just kind of working extra just to build a nest egg and I'm losing out on time with my family a little bit. Well, I would crunch and, the numbers using, you know, we have an investment calculator at our, on our website and go, all right, I got, we have this much in our 401ks and IRAs. If we contribute this much per month, even at a very conservative, you know, average return of let's say 8%, how much would we have by 51 or mm-hmm. 65 or whenever you plan to keep working? And that will help you get a full picture of pension plus this amount on investments. If we pulled this percentage off each year, we could live off of this. But it sounds like you guys have a 
pretty hefty lifestyle, even with your yeah. hefty income. How so, far are you from paying your home off? You said it's paid off? My, yeah, my house oh, is it's paid, paid off. off. So, so I'm wondering where all this 15 grand is going every month. Uh, basically into savings. Like we're putting, like I'm putting 23,000 a year into my 401k. My wife's putting 19,000 in her 401k. Okay. Uh, we're maxing out our Roth. Um, and then 247 sounds like a lot, but when you have taxes that come out of that, you know, so there's a lot of taxes that come involved. So That's true. I, month, what percentage? Our monthly expending is about 2500 a month just in bills, like as far as cell phones, groceries, power, taxes, insurance, stuff like that. Have you looked? Can you tell me what percentage of your income is going every month towards investing? My guess it's, around, it's about 20 something percent. It's about 28 to 30%. Okay, here's the thing. Um, we call we would call that, you're on baby step seven. And at baby step seven, you're allowed to jump up your retirement to whatever percentage rate you see fit, whatever feels right. And if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, like we're up, we're up against it. Like we're not living life. I've got to make 80 hours and work 80 hours a week in order to make this thing happen. That's a sign to pull back. Like you've done an excellent job. You have no debt. Your home is paid for. You know, you've got great benefits from your work. I think that maybe in your mind, it's like we're playing catch up and we've got to go, 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 go. But you have the ability to pull your foot off the pedal on this a little bit. Yeah, I, that's my problem. It's like I don't know when to pull, pull the foot off the pedal because I know it's like uh, they say you need to have like 10 times into your retirement accounts or whatever else. But with the way it factors with my pension, uh -huh. I don't know how that works out. Well, I mean, you have your pension, plus you'll have your nest eggs when that time comes. Because here's the thing. You're not stopping working at 51. You're just not going to be in law enforcement when right. you're 51. So you're gonna, still going to have an income. That's still money that you have the ability to put 15 plus percentage of away in retirement. And, you know, a good rule of thumb, I think that you should work with an investment professional, but a good rule of thumb, George, is if you can live off the interest that your nest egg is generating, plus your pension, plus your social security, obviously you could account for inflation at some point in there, but that's a good place to start. So if you retire and by the reti time you retire, you've got $700,000, you've been making a 10% rate of return, you have to ask yourself, okay, that's $70,000 a year plus my pension, plus my wife's, yeah. if she has anything, and then plus your social security. So that's just a very broad way to look at it, but work with an investment professional and get yourself some peace of mind. That's the okay, key. That sounds great. Don't freak out about it, man. You're on the right track. It may be time to dial it back a little uh -huh. bit and enjoy the fruits of your labor. This is The Ramsey Show. to the Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Jade Warshaw, and we've got a special guest on the debt-free stage. Jaden joins us from Frederick, Maryland. How are you, Jaden? I'm so good. I'm so excited to be here. Yay. Thanks for making the trip. Yeah, it's it's quite a trip. I'm excited. And you're here because you're debt-free, and we're celebrating. I am, yes. It's been a few months, so luckily I've had a little bit of an experience with it, but yeah, it it feels it's so still good. fresh. It's still fresh. It is wow. still fresh. Yes. We can hear it in your voice. You're still excited. I know, I'm so excited. It's crazy to be here. You know, on the other side of it, you look for so long and you just wait. You work really hard and yeah, it's here. And you it's made awesome. it through. It's very difficult it to through. get on the debt free stage. Uh, we get thousands of applications a year and we only take the best. So oh you are the best, apparently. I wasn't at first. <laughs> so the the you reason made it why the second I'm time. here is pretty intense. Yeah, I made wow. it the second time. Yeah. Well, how much have you paid off? I paid off just under $132,000. Wow. Ooh. All student loans. Wow. Let's go. Thank That's you. That's amazing. How I long know. did that take? Uh, just under 15 months. Whoa. Wow. Okay. What yeah. was your range of income during that time? I started at $41,500, which was crazy. And almost all of them were private student loans through Sally Mae. So I looked at um, the amount that I was going to be paying and I was like, oh my gosh, there's no way I can do it. 
um, called the people who I knew had, were good with money. They had been through financial peace, and yeah, then eventually, sorry. I'm going through the whole story already, but wow. <laughs> so you, you started get your at income 41. Up from 41? Yes, 112,000. That's hey. an approximate. Yeah. Wow. What did you study? Um, I have a bachelor's degree in international relations and Spanish and a minor in history. So liberal arts. I'm working on studying for my LSAT to go to law school for free. So that nice. is cool. Yes. That's and what are you the doing goal. now for work? I'm a uh, legal assistant. I do paralegal work. Okay. That's awesome. So you're yeah. in the legal field. That's yeah. exciting. Good field. Thanks. And you paid off all of those loans in 15 months. Ooh, are the numbers adding up for me? Okay. So there is one small detail. Um, so I was living with my uncle and my aunt who had previously went through financial peace. Um, and they actually gifted me $19,500 to pay off my federal loans, which wow. was awesome. amazing. Yeah, they were more than helpful. I, I can't even express how thankful I am. That's awesome. And the rest was just hustle and grind? How'd you do hustle it? Grind? Yeah, I served. <laughs> I um, went to work during the day. My work I work for an intellectual property firm, so it's a lot of overtime if you get in applications that are urgent. Um, and then, so I was able to boost my income that way. And then I just worked like crazy serving. I worked six days a week at a restaurant and I doubled on weekends. So wow. it was a lot. Yeah. So you're saying that if you work extra, you can get out of debt? Yeah, that's, that's the key, believe it or not. Not in a little self-discipline. <laughs> Man, tell everybody because a lot of people think it's impossible to pay off student loans. 132000 at that. I know. I know. I looked at it whenever I first started. So I was watching the shows for a bit once I had talked to my uncle, talked to my Aunt Liz and... Um, yeah, I just I don't I couldn't find anyone who was in the same boat as me who had so many private student loans. Yeah. My monthly minimums were almost two thousand dollars. I know oh. about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know about that, girl. I know it's nice to hear your story. Yeah, it was um, wow. it was really intense and single, paying it off by myself. And you know, um, I actually graduated a year early, so all my friends were still in school, which was great. I mean, it's cool to go visit them and stuff, but at the same time, I was working all the time, so I'm seeing them live their lives. Like I'm an and adult now. Yes, I oh know. It, it hit really hard. So yeah. how old are you? <laughs> I'm 23. So Whoa. 23 years old. Yes. You utilize the resources at your disposal. Your aunt and uncle, yep. they're like, hey, we're here for you. Uh, yep. You get two jobs. Two jobs. Working like overtime. Crazy. Yeah. Wow. The, yeah. To push yeah. it to six figures, and that helped you knock this out quickly. Yeah, You were intense. Goodness. So what got you on this Ramsey plan? Um, so I was at school, um, again, yeah, I was just, I was so stressed. I was shaking literally because I was so scared of that number, mm -hmm. $2,000 a month. How was I going to afford rent and groceries and that? And then I'm saving for law, you know, like it's just impossible. So, um, I called them. I knew that they had done a plan. I didn't really know any of the details. I've heard Dave's name before, but that was about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I knew they were good with money. Gave them a call. I said, Hey, this is the situation I'm in. And they were so helpful from it. Yeah, day one, they, we pretty much broke it down. I moved from Pittsburgh to Ma uh, yeah to Maryland, Frederick, and I just worked. That was pretty much it. They were like, "You got this, girl." So, so they, they just showed you the Ramsey plan, and you were really like, "All did. right, fine, I'll do this." Yeah, yeah. You're smart. <laughs> They're good with money. I'll trust them. <laughs> yeah. So the question we get, I know the question I get all the time is, "How yeah. do you stay motivated?" And so I'm sure so many people want to know, "How, Jaden, did you stay motivated?" Like you said, all your friends are out here living, yeah. living their best life. Like, what did you do? I think. The main thing was just uh, the two of them. My friends honestly were really helpful too. Even though they were living their lives, they said, they were like, girl, you are amazing. You should totally do this. They weren't doing it, which is totally fine. Everyone moves at their own pace. Um, but yeah, they were so, everyone was so nice and helpful. And honestly, I think a lot of it is just self-discipline. Like mm -hmm. you really just have to, I think when you see those numbers and you're terrified and that's your only option, mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is. It's your only option. That's I right. don't know. I would have literally just, I, you can't even bankrupt student loans. So no. there was nothing else I could do. Listen, I had and then you see that. the numbers working for you and you see the progress. Yes. You get excited. There's light at the end of the tunnel and it's not an oncoming train. Right. That's exciting. Yes. Initially, I thought um, whenever I was going to undergrad, I had always thought, I was like, oh, this will be fine. I'm going to go straight through to law school. I'm going to come out. Attorneys make good money. I'll be fine. <laughs> a, not all attorneys make a ton of money. B, there, I life didn't happen as planned per usual you know this is ex should have been expected but it wow. wasn't so, so you wow. said you had to yeah. you know make some sacrifices what were some of the biggest no's you had to make on this journey as a young girl who's like i want to live my <laughs> life in yolo too yeah so my friends went on spring break trips it sounds so silly saying it out loud it's now, not though because it's life yeah it, it really is they were going on trips to nashville and to the beach and my family was taking trips together and every single, even if we went on a family trip and it was covered, it was still 
that's money that's being taken away from paying towards the loans because you're not working during that time. So, and I would say other than that, I think it was really challenging just not seeing, I saw my aunt and uncle a, great, a lot, which was great, but you're not seeing your family, like your, mm -hmm. uh, my household family a lot, which. Wow, and yeah. you survived to tell the tale. Yeah. I sure did, here I am. And now you'll be the one who's like, guys, wanna go on this trip? And they're like, we're broke. Well, we now can't. they'll be coming to you to figure out how to pay off their debt. <laughs> it's just, some of them already have been asking me about it, so it's been great, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna inspire a lot of people, including millions listening, who are like, I'm a young single girl with student loans, I could be like Jaden. Yeah, you can totally do this. You just have to work really hard. And That's wow. Awesome. It will be over. Yeah, it will be over before you know it. Did you have some cheerleaders wow. along this journey? My aunt and my uncle were really my biggest cheerleaders. They sound I amazing. They were, seriously, I could not have been more blessed. But um, my friends, my family, I people say that they have a lot of naysayers, people calling you crazy. I luckily did not run into that at all. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So it was amazing. It Look, was great. You're, you're different. There are, grown, <laughs> there are grown people who make more money than you do, who they keep their loans around forever. Yeah. Until you know, they start out low and they work themselves up to 132k, and you just said, "Not me, no, not no. me." Oh, I couldn't love do it. it! Thank you, thank you. It's, it's really so exciting. Good. 23, making six figures, bright future ahead of you. We're so proud of you. Can thank you tell you. us quick how do you go to law school for free? Because that's your plan. Yeah, you yeah. You predecided this is what's going to happen. Well, yeah. So initially, that wasn't the plan. Luckily, after going through everything, absolutely. Um, so I'm studying for my LSAT right now. And if you get a high enough score on your LSAT, basically it's about that. There's other softer factors as well that you have to take into account. But um, yeah, just schools just throw the full ride at you because they want the person who's <laughs> a brilliant prodigy. I, I wouldn't say they throw it at you, but yeah, yeah, you definitely you can get into law I school. I think for you're. Free. I feel wow. like you're the type of yeah. person who will just do it because yeah. you're so focused, you're so determined. It's what got you out of debt, and it's what's going to get you through law school debt free. Yeah, you Ooh. just have to be. You I have love to be. it. Very Thank impressive. You. So proud Very of you. impressive. Well, Thank you guys. we've got uh, every dollar premium for. For you a whole year and we're going to give you another one to gift to someone else to get their journey started because we know getting a plan for every one of those dollars is the key spend less make more throw it at the debt do what you got to do and bada bing bada boom you'll become debt free like Jaden. all right hey. the moment we've been waiting for it's Jaden from frederick maryland $132,000 in student loans paid off in 15 months, making 41 all the way up to 112 with the side hustles and serving six days a week. <laughs> Doubles wow. on the weekends. <laughs> Count it down, Jaden. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free! Love that debt That's free it. vibrato. In yeah, there. she had a little a little tone going on. Jaden, Jaden, you need to get on the road. I think that she is amazing. I mean, she's one of those people you just have a little pep in your step after hanging out with her. She att attracts people who want to yeah. grow in life. Yeah. And she didn't have any naysayers because she didn't surround herself with naysayers. That's right. She's got the right people around her. You wow. got to do the same thing, America. Get the right inputs. Get the right people around you. Stay focused. Do whatever it takes. Whether you're 21 or 61, this plan works every time you work it. This is The Ramsey Show. scripture of the day comes from Psalms 37, 3 and 4. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Reba McIntyre said, be different, stand out, and work your butt off. Mm. I like that. Little Reba. Little Reba, it worked out for her. Listen, she never ages. How does that happen? I know, we just saw a photo with uh, Zach in the booth had a photo. He ran into Reba somewhere. She looks just like just she did 20 same. years ago. I don't know how that happens. Oh, she's a survivor. We know that. All right. <laughs> Let's get to the phone lines. Maxwell joins us all the way in Australia. Let's do this thing. What's going on, Maxwell? Good morning, guys. How are you? Hi, Jade. Hi, George. Hey, thank how you so um, much for calling. We needed advice. an accent today, and this one's brilliant. Good G'day. I've never heard another Aussie online, so I thought let's be the first. Yeah, G'day. people, I we don't get a ton of calls from us. We get a lot of Canadians, but I prefer you. 
Uh, I, I want your advice um, because today is a really good day for crypto, and I also have a bit of gold. Okay. It's about four and a half thousand dollars in crypto today, and I have about four thousand dollars Australian in gold, which comes out to about one point four ounces. I am in a little bit of debt. I am paying off my debt. Um, I do make about seventy five thousand dollars a year, but I just want to know what should I do with the gold? Should I maintain it until twenty thirty? keep it in my bank and then trade it in or what What do you guys suggest with all my assets? I do have a bit of a retirement fund, but not much. Why did you get the gold in the first place? What was the goal of that? I inherited it actually. Oh, very cool. Okay. So this is from family? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. From my pop. How much debt do you have? Roughly... Two and a half thousand, which I am paying off. I'm working to pay it off very quickly. Yeah. So that shouldn't be, I mean, that's like a paycheck for you, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't say that. I've given myself a deadline, which I'm I'm adhering to. Like I, um, I've set myself a timeline. So it's like the 30th of April it has to all be paid off by. Okay. So end of April. What kind of debt is it? Yep. So I've got... Um, about 1100 on a credit card and have another debt to my employer who bought me a work PC and I'm just paying him back out of my um, paychecks. But I, they haven't actually deducted anything yet, so I still owe them roughly $1,500, but I'm, I'm expecting to pay them back by tax time okay. this year. So the question is, should you sell the gold, the Bitcoin, to get out of debt faster? Well, the Bitcoin, I don't want to touch for now, but for the gold, do you guys think I should be selling it to get out of debt or should yeah. I keep it to 2030? Let no, I don't, I don't know why 2030. I would just sell it now. Sell as much as you need to to get out of debt. And you also don't have an emergency fund, it sounds like. No, nah, not really, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'd sell all of the gold. To be honest, Maxwell, even if you didn't have the debt, the advice would be the same. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. I mean, because I know Dave's not a big fan of the gold. Well, it just it, it doesn't really make sense in any plan except for some sort of apocalyptic paranoia where gold becomes a bartering system. And, you know, we've heard it's a hedge against inflation. And when times get scary in the economy, gold will go up in value. But again, in scary times, no one's going out to buy gold to live their life. They got to turn that into money. So true. So I don't know. I'm just I, it's not that I'm anti gold. It's fine if you want to own some for fun, but I wouldn't use it as part of my investing plan. You're better off investing in the stock market. Is there an equivalent with your job I here? We have you. the 401k. Is, do you have an equivalent of that in Australia that's kind of associated with your with your employer that goes into your retirement? No, but since listening to the show, I've Googled it. And, you know, as an Australian, I can invest in that. But I've heard Dave been talking about mutual funds. So potentially if I do sell the gold, pay off the debt, I can just chip into a mutual fund because the return rate looks better than the stocks that I'm looking at. I'm looking at like Apple. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Tesla yeah. What you're doing with a mutual fund is you're just buying a return. basket of stocks, which will help you diversify and avoid, you know, being too risky having one stock. If that company goes yep. down or up in value, all of that's too volatile. So if I were you, I'm selling all the gold, I'm getting rid of all the debt, and I'm going to stockpile an emergency fund with all my future paychecks. If you're gun ho on keeping the crypto, yeah. I can't talk you off that ledge, then you can hang on to it. But build that emergency fund as fast as possible, three to six months of your expenses. So do you know how much money it would be to run yeah, your household absolutely. for one month? It, I pay so much rent where I live. I pay like $1,000 every two weeks just on my rent. So I need to kind of figure out a game plan because I'm not in a stable like – if I was to lose my job today – my emergency fund, like I'd probably be a bit screwed. Are you so single? That's why I need kind of a bit of, um, yes, thank God. <laughs> okay. I mean, you you could look into getting a roommate to help w offset these costs right now if rent is crazy over there. Uh, it's a studio. I live like 600 meters from the Harbour Bridge, so the studio is like super expensive. But, you know, I'm definitely touching base with what I need to do to stay afloat. I'm looking at maybe a different job, different, like maybe starting a business, but. Is it necessary for you to live in such a room. high rent area? For if you your move job? further away, could you find rent that's no. you know twelve hundred bucks? The thing is, Sydney is crazy. It's crazy, and I really do love the freedom of having my own apartment. Unfortunately, it is so expensive, but 
I'm looking at jobs that might take me back out to the Northern Territory where you don't have to pay rent. You just earn like a hundred and a hundred plus K a year and all, you know, you're pretty much just taken care of and you have to just work, 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 but wow. you still make absolute bank. Interesting. So I'm looking at probably doing that. Yeah. Yeah. In many, mining industry. In many ways, I think that there's a lot of differences between where you live versus where we live, obviously, but the baby steps, I think, remain yeah. the same for you and the idea of keeping a thousand dollars set aside by the time you get this debt paid off and then like george said working to save up that three to six months of expenses in your case i'd probably veer towards six months because you're the only one bringing in income and then after that if you can find a way to invest 15 percent of your income into mutual funds like what you talked about growth growth and income aggressive growth and international is what we say here and that's that's what i would do and i think for you the same way if someone from the States called in and said, hey, you know, I'm paying $2,000 in rent and it's too expensive, we would tell them, look, look someplace less expensive, consider a roommate, find other ways to bring in more income. Yeah. So in many ways, you know, the, the equation is exactly the same, even though some of their particulars may be a little different. Yeah, even keeping your household expenses mm -hmm. to, you know, 25% of your take-home pay going towards the rent, mm -hmm. that's going to help you not get too you know, sideways where you go, oh my gosh, no wonder I can't save for the future and do all these things. 50% of my take-home pay is going to rent. And so that's where I go. I know you want exactly. you, you want the beauty of having a place to yourself. You want the beauty of living close to the city. You want the beauty of this and that. But at some point we have to make some sacrifices in a different direction if we want, you know, you can't, we movement. can't have it all. Yeah. You can't have the cake and eat it too. And so I think you've got to sit no. down and decide what's really important to you. And uh, luckily you don't have much debt and this thing's going to be gone within a month or two. But it's the next, you know, five years we have to look yeah. at to go, is this sustainable? That's why I've come on board with the baby steps because it's so easy to, to kind of be mean to yourself and push yourself. But yeah. if you just slow down, like like you said, Jay, I, I do want to get this debt and then I do want to um, put that $1,000 away and then I do want to have that six months back up because that stability, having... I've now, since gaining crypto, I've gained so much financial understanding, but also since watching the Ramsey show, like, you guys have helped a lot, so thank you. I, I kind of feel like, okay, stop being mean and just slow down <laughs> to get the job done, you know what I mean? That's yeah. right, that's right. A lot yeah, of people you just need to stop. Butt. They got to stop doing 17 things at once and just focus on one thing at a time, get their ducks in a row, build a foundation. So mm -hmm. even with you, I'm not mad if you want to put more money into crypto, but I would wait until you've already put 15% into your, uh, your retirement plan. Then with any fun money beyond that, go ahead and put it in crypto, and uh, I hope it works out for you. So... I think you're on a good path. And regardless of where you are in the world, I love that these steps are so simple. Yeah. They just work. It's get out of debt, stay out of debt. You know, you have a fund for the emergencies for the future yeah. and save for retirement. And usually I might get a little bent out of shape for somebody that has gold and crypto, but with that accent. I know. He's you so can't get charming. Mad at him. He's too dang charming. He got me. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Oh, I good love that these baby the steps work everywhere. That's great. It's amazing how it works. This has been The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel. That's Jade Warshaw. Thank you to all the folks in the booth that kept the show afloat despite ourselves and you, America. Thank you for listening. Until next time, spend wisely, save intentionally, and give generously. Generously.